Welcome everybody to the 250 kilometer review of the KS S18. Now, if you haven't seen the first video review I've done on this, then you need to go back and check it out. I'll put a link below and a link above, and you can go and check out the first video. So that's the unboxing and the first 100 kilometers that I've done. So go and check that out. Definitely worth watching that. It's gonna be massively more in depth than this one. This is a quick update video. Now, if you don't follow Speedy Feet, or this is the first video you've dropped into, we do an unboxing and range test, um, and then we do a 250 kilometer review, a 650 and a 1,000 kilometer review. So this is the 250 kilometer review, and I'll let you into a little secret, I've done almost 400 kilometers. Uh, I wanna push this thing as hard and fast as possible. There's a lot of questions out there that everyone's asking. I'm trying to get into a position where I can say, look, I've ridden this long enough now. It's all very well doing an unboxing and doing a quick video review, giving your thoughts, and then not being able to elaborate any further without any real experience. Uh, one of the golden rules that I've said for years now, which is do 50 miles on a wheel until you can truly put your opinion against it, the pros and cons and how it rides, etc. You really need to get, that, get to know that wheel, basically. And 50 miles is the minimum you want to be doing before you get to know a wheel. So without further ado, this is essentially the 400 kilometer video review and that's pretty good mileage really to be fair to get an all round feel for this wheel. Now I did two trips the other day, 30 miles um, twice, so I did 60 miles in total, one day to 30, next day to 30. I was able to do an average speed of around about 23, 24 miles an hour. Um, the journey actually in one go was 20 miles that I went and that pretty much the 20 20, 25 mile mark at that sort of speed is what the battery will give out. That's a very, very high speed um, for what you would normally be doing. Normally, is that a word? Hopefully. Um, so that's pushing it to the limit. Now you've always got to remember that a lot of people go, oh my goodness, it's only 20, 25 miles. That's just, that's terrible. That's an average speed. So that includes everything. So that is, that's from the door to uh, point B, point A to point B, you won't actually really be doing that. Some of you may argue that you will. It's a bit like with electric cars, they say, how far will they go? Um, you say, oh, I do, I do 200 miles to a charge. And they say, oh, well, what if I wanna go and visit my great, great aunt that lives up in 800 miles away? And you're like, well, you never do that. Oh, I do. Um, so the mileage, really, really get to grips with how many miles you will actually be doing. This obviously is only a thousand, just over a thousand watt hour battery. So it's not the biggest battery in the world and it's never claimed to be. So that's your mileage. So there's very often we get asked, what's, your, what's the perfect wheel? What's the best wheel for me? And there's many answers to that question, which I've covered many a time. So I'm not gonna go into that. There is no perfect wheel. You've either got massive range and it's too heavy, or it's too big and too heavy. You get both those at the same time to boot. Um, or you can get something like this. Now this is quite a tall wheel, um, but it's pretty compact. So for a thousand watt hours, just over, you get the suspension element of this, which I found in the on the road riding has been absolutely brilliant. It's exceptional in terms of ride quality. So if you're a city commuter, this traveling about is beautiful for what you need, basically. Now off-road, it adds a different dynamic to it because obviously you're moving up and down as you go off-road. So if you're doing tight, really technical trails, you've got this movement you never used to have as well as your movement here forward and back, you've also got up and down, um, obviously accentuated more. So you've got to time in and think about the how you've got your suspension set up. So go and watch video one in terms of that. It's an extra complication added to the suspension. It's not massively complex. It's just a complication that's added to your response times. Now where we are in the Forest of Dean in Gloucestershire in the UK, it's varying. Uh, terrains so you can have rock close to rock beds basically so loads of hard just completely solid trails that have worn down and you can be riding over those to loose gravel to mud to compacted dirt to sandy dirt we've got pretty much of it all here it's all handled by the forestry commission so you get logging trucks or you can go to a place which has never been touched for years and no one's ever set foot probably for a hundred years so you can go to all these sorts of places in this huge forest we're in um, and so we've got varying terrains. Then you've got roots as well, which are quite sharp. So those sharp, ju um, sharp jumps, essentially, are completely different to running over rapid, solid ground. And so you need to try and find an optimum for your conditions. Now, 
if you're riding in the city, which most people are, a lot of people we brought to the forest don't ever touch off-road. So we're in a niche, really. Uh, if you're commuting on tarmac and you've got potholes um, and you've got rough general roads, then a, you'll be in the ballpark once you set that suspension at once, you can pretty much better ride that without ever touching it again. Um, so from that point of view, probably, I don't, couldn't even put a percentage on it, but say it's 90% of people <laughs> that are gonna be riding around on the roads doing normal riding. You're gonna set it up and you're gonna get the box and you're gonna ride and that's gonna be absolutely spot on for you. If you're doing varying terrains like the Forest Dean, then from that point of view, you need to be messing about every now and again with the settings of your suspension. If your off-road trails are all the same, you ride the same thing over and over and over again, and obviously the same applies to a city rider, you're gonna set it up once and then ride it. So only if it's massively varied. Um, so that's the only thing I would notice uh, with this when I'm riding along on the varying terrain that we've got here, you notice how you could actually improve that ride for a different type of terrain. So I could be going on a sandy trail for a couple of miles then hit a load of gravel. You think, yeah, I could do with messing about suspension settings there. The pump that comes with it, you could take that in a bag. So if you really, really want to spend a day out on the trails and you do want to mess about with it and do, op do want to optimize the suspension for exactly what you need, take the pump with you. You can do it on the fly. It's not like you take it to a garage to get it done. So you can do it there and then it just requires a bit of messing about with. But from that, of course, you get all the added advantages with the suspension unit. So you must bear that in mind. It's, it's got great advantage, but just a little bit more legwork to get you to where you want to be with that. So with those road journeys, uh, 20 miles, and it was 30 miles in a day. So I did 30 miles back to back, um, one on one day, one on the next, exactly the same journey. I got the same battery results from both. That's why I tested it. The ride was more or less basically all road, and it was a beautiful machine didn't miss a beat, just pushed it, um, kept it going, spot on. One thing I did notice when I've got the helmet on, this hasn't got a speaker as such that we've suddenly become accustomed to, which is really big speaker systems that push volume out. This is like your board speaker, which is just a beeping speaker as I call them. Um, that, with the helmet on, and the speed that's you know up into the 20s, so 23, 24, 25 miles an hour, the wind hitting the helmet almost overpowers the speaker. So that is something to be careful of. So if you're pushing the speed, and especially if you've got a headwind, you may not be able to hear the alarm. So it's worthwhile noticing that. Obviously you've got your tilt back on your, your foot plates. So make sure that you go heavy on the foot plates to warn you rather than relying on the alarm system is what I'm saying, because it is on the quiet side. No problem, if you're going anything slower than that, you can hear it, it's perfectly fine, not an issue. It's just at those speeds, wearing a full face helmet, which you should be, you're gonna feel it hitting the air, the air hitting your side of your helmet and it almost blocks it out entirely. So keep an eye on that one for sure. I've used this in the rain and had absolutely no issue whatsoever. There's no water ingress, it's not caused any problems and it has been absolutely hammering it down and it's been fine, no issues. Now it is certified to use in the rain, so it's no problem there. The IP rating's all good, no problem whatsoever from that front. But I've actually tested it in real life and I can report back there's been no issues whatsoever. One area this does come in useful for, suspension, is city riding. So you may think, oh, I don't need suspension because I just ride smooth roads all day. Well, curbs and things like that, if you're dropping off them, if you're doing a lot of commuting, that dropping off curbs multiple times a day does take an impact on your knees. And we can see in the slow motion footage the fact that actually this does take the kick out of the landing um, and you can also play about and so you can actually jump and hop the thing because it's got suspension as long as you're in timing with the suspension and how you've got it set up you can hop this bunny hop it essentially is what you might want to call it so you can have a play about there as well but the important thing is for ride comfort if you're not into trip riding you're just going to commute with the thing and you're not interested in that off-roading or trip riding whatsoever this takes the sting out of hitting stuff. Whether that be a pothole, uh, a slight rise in the curb, uneven roads, this takes the whip out. And that fatigue then isn't hitting your body, so it's taking something that makes it much more comfortable to ride. One thing I would like to point out is that the rubbing noise, which is in video one, disappeared. So I stubbornly stuck with it, as I said in the first video, which is, I'm just gonna stick with it, I'm not gonna strip the thing down. That noise has gone, the only time I can get it to actually kick back in that scraping noise is by really hard turning right and it still just makes a noise. 
So whatever that little bit of stuff sticking in the way in that molding inside is, is just worn away. And there's no, there's no uh, degradation of the tire at all. It's just remained the same. I can't even see a rubbing mark, so that's gone. Um, no issue at all. Now I'm riding along, it's not constantly going dip, 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 dip. It just works fine. And that went about the 150 kilometer mark, something like that. So I haven't had that noise all that time. You can see the dust and how dusty it is. Basically, this is this is the full 400 kilometers. I have not washed this wheel at all. I have been out in the rain, of course, but this is how it looks. This is the state of the wheel at the moment. No problems at all, really, there. I mean, it's got dust, which you would expect, but nothing mega. And I have been in the rain as well as mud. So I've been on muddy trails as well. No issues, no clogging and shrouding, nothing like that. Occasionally you get stones whipped through and they make a the noise and you just get used to that. I've had it on other wheels. They've got close bodies to the tire. Obviously a bit of dirt. You go through gravel, fine gravel trails. The tire goes round, the amount of weight on it pushes it up, gets stuck in the tire a little bit. It goes round and it gets caught on the shroud and it makes a scrape noise as it goes through. It just ejects it to the side or it drops down. It's not, it's not a biggie. It just makes noise as you're riding along. It talks to you. One thing you might have noticed from the slow motion footage is as I was dropping off a curb, this is lifting up for the keen eyed viewer. So you've got to kind of make sure it's nicely done. It's not really a, a definite click to this. Um, so just make sure you've actually got this down. It has got a little tab here and here, um, but you just need to be sure that it's fully engaged, but enough jumping around will knock that loose in this model anyway, that I've got. Which is basically production, it's pre-production just the light has been really, really strong and the auto sensor works fine. I've had no issues whatsoever there. The side padding here, I caught this on my car uh, arch, my wheel arch in my car, and it pulled the back off. So this will need re-sticking down again. Um, so I've done it once when it came out of the box. As you would have seen, I had to stick one back on again. It's real basic. It's just a small gripe that the glue is not strong enough really. Nothing major, seriously nothing major. Just need to stick it on. Um, yep, yeah, I mean, they've told me that King Song said that they're gonna, they're gonna sort that out anyway, next one. I have had two offs on this wheel. One you saw in the first video and I had another one, uh, probably at the 200 kilometer mark. The higher foot position, the higher foot plates, cause you've got to start high with suspension models. Don't forget that you've got to start higher cause that suspension compresses. And so you have a higher starting point. Now I've had it where on a slight camber and it happened to be mud and it just slipped out from underneath me and I managed to sort of limp along one foot, one foot on the foot plate and one on the floor going no, 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 no. And I just couldn't hold it long enough and it slammed into the ground on its side. No damage to report whatsoever. So it survived that well. It didn't even take off the foam um, support pad there, which this area here is prone, especially if you hit tarmac, to actually tear this part here because um, it's exposed and it's, but it's a soft padding. So it's almost a sacrificial part. If you do have a big wipeout, it's gonna take that uh, with it essentially. With the front of the wheel here, you can see this, this does keep popping out. I'm not sure why that is, um, but it does. But they're little rubber bumpers. You can just push them back in um, how you want. Now, what, what I have done is I was charging it and this is a word of warning for you new KSS18 owners is when you're charging, it's obviously off, so it's not stabilizing. And you usually, typically, will have it lent against a wall. When you come to pull the plug out, obviously it's quite tight, and you tend to just tip it forward, just a touch. I did that. I'm usually very, very careful with this sort of stuff. And it swung forward and slammed into the ground. When I picked it up, I wasn't best pleased because it took out this section here. So despite having these little rubber bumpers that stick out, um, it still managed to take out this section. Uh, which I was not happy bunny. I could stick that back together. There's nothing that major. There's no components in there that are gonna cause any issues with water ingress, but um, yeah, not that best pleased if I'm honest. So be careful when you're unplugging it, when it's off, you unplug it, just make sure you hold it tight, pull it so it doesn't go face down and smash its own face in. Uh, I've done it on other wheels, not very often, but they haven't broken like that. So that's a bit of a shame that I've damaged that. And as you can see, that's actually a part of an inner component. So that will need replacing at some point. 
I won't bother because these things happen. Um, all your previous wheel owners will know that. So it's just slightly cosmetic. I can get the piece, still got it, I'll stick it back on. Um, nothing major. Now with the pads, just make sure you do stick them down. As you can see, this one's slightly wearing, so it's got a crack in it. Um, and it's actually one I stuck back down originally. The middle section is coming out, coming apart, and that's just fatigue because it hasn't actually come off and been bent it sort of back on itself or anything like that. It, this has just happened naturally, presumably just through vibration and movement. Um, it's never been folded over on itself, put it that way. So make sure if they are loose, and you do have to do a job of sticking them down, then obviously um, stick them down really, really well so there's no movement there, just to save you that little bit of a headache. Uh, we will try and get all these parts, of course, and put them in the store so they're available um, to replace because these are kind of wearing parts as well your body's touching. So still had the issue with heavy braking. So unless you turn your legs in and brace it or get some aftermarket pads to put on there, still get a bit of wobble. So again, I'm not going to go back through that. I spent about 10 or 15 minutes on it, I think, in the first video. Just keep that in mind. So overall, with this wheel, where I stand with it is, is incredibly comfortable. Um, it's been incredibly reliable. We're, we're at 400 kilometers, so we've got, we got more to go, but a lot more to go. Um, but I found it to be rock solid, no issues whatsoever. Apart from the ones that were detailed out of the box um, in video one. Get, there doesn't appear to be an optimum with the pedal height, foot plate height. Um, on canvas so just be very very wary of that if you're hitting mud on an angle you just need to be really careful of that the one thing i did have an issue with is this handle here at this position so when it's locked in that position it's fine if you're on the flat if you're on a slope like my drive is then it is actually can catch you out almost every time so when it's not stabilized in that position um, it will just tip over so be very careful a bit like when you're unplugging the charger, just make sure that you've got that as stable as possible. Because if you don't, it'll smash its face into the ground and it's most likely not to be on carpet, but on tarmac. So on a slope, be extra careful in that position. If you're pulling it up to actually lift it over something, make sure you're fully bracing it. Well, I hope that's been really informative. It's only a short video, but I hope it's given you a bit of a catch up to where we're at now with this sort of mileage lumped on the machine. It's performed perfectly in terms of no failures, no board failures, the lights have all worked, absolutely everything. Uh, the app occasionally doesn't report a battery percentage, but if you kill the app off your phone and then reopen it, if you do that enough times, then it starts reporting battery percentage. But please like and subscribe and follow us on our Facebook page, obviously. Go to electricpeople.org and sign up there and submit some content because everyone likes it. This is for the people that aren't on Facebook. Many wheel riders are on Facebook, so the groups you're in, they're not all actually there. You haven't got all riders there, not representing the whole community. So electricpeople.org aims to sort of pull them all together. Um, so yeah, I will see you on the 650, which by all accounts ain't gonna be long, is it? See you on the next one.